I'm so excited to be here with Jen Loudon. Honored, Jen, to have you here. Um, I'm just gonna like have you share your wisdom about writing in the short time that we have together, because I know a lot of folks watching this or listening to this um, would love to be a successful writer like you. And uh, you. you know, and and when I say successful, I don't necessarily just mean the fact that you know I just checked your your latest book that came out not too long ago. You already have five hundred Amazon reviews, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, that's, and that's no small thing. I'm like, I try so hard, and I get like. <laughs> Big marketing, 30 <laughs> reviews. And then here you are, Jen's like, oh, I put out a book, 500 <laughs> reviews, you know, whatever. And, and of course, your other books are massive bestsellers too. But it, that's one level of success. But mm. you also are successful, I think, because you write consistently. Mm. You are always in, in the practice mm -hmm. and, and publishing, you know? And so anyway, so <laughs> I, I am, I'm happy for, for you to be here. Um, for those who don't know, uh, Jen, you have been known in part as, um, I guess, the self-care queen. I mean, you, you, you really helped to popularize the idea um, of self-care. It's big. You know, the world knows the idea now. And uh, you've been running a lot of um, writing uh, programs. You consult and coach, you know, well-known people on their, on their writing projects. And so here we are. You get a bit of a chance to pick your brain about writing. So the first question I have for you is, I mean, having worked with so many aspiring writers, what is like one of the common blocks? And you can start with anywhere you want, but what's one of the common blocks that people go, I, I, I just can't, I can't seem to get myself to write consistently or to publish. What comes to mind for you as one of the common blocks? Oh gosh, I think they're all related to, yeah. to not actually knowing how to write that works for you. I have written professionally for 30 years, as in made my living, and I have been writing for 40 years, um, and I almost quit. And I almost quit right before the title for my first book, The Woman's Comfort Book, which sort of started that whole self-care, um, comfort, self-nurturing conversation in the um, wider world came to me actually moments before it came to me. So I think the thing that goes to the heart of so many of our fears and blocks and um, confusion, right? It feels like a sense of confusion is that we haven't learned how to write in a way that really works for our lives and our brains. Like you even said the word consistent. I have a lot of people who come to my writing program or writing programs and they'll be like, I wanna have a consistent writing practice. And my question is always why? <laughs> like why because someone told you on the internet and maybe you really do but how does it fit your life what does consistent get you I think the first thing I want people to do in learning how to write in a way that really works for them is to connect with that deep why what do they want out of it I think George we're afraid to be selfish about our writing and we have to be selfish before we can be generous <laughs> so interesting and what do you mean by selfish with our writing I mean because uh, if we're publishing, mm -hmm. um, I think publishing is a generous act. It totally you know, is. Because it, needs it, to be. it, it it's so much, uh, well, so much hard work, right, that went into the final product, if we're talking about a book, but even social media posts can be mm -hmm. opening our heart, being, being vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And so what does that mean to be, <laughs> to be well, selfish think, first? So, you know, you talk about this so beautifully in your, your work that I you know, recommend, if you go to my resource page on my website, I have a link to your work because I believe in it so much. Yes. So grateful, thank because, you. No, because you're so genuine. And I think, but you also are really clear when you're doing a social media post, you're writing your books, whatever you're doing, you're clear why you're doing it. Like I know that you're sharing your wisdom with me and your experience so I can help me grow my business or be more confident on social media, et cetera. But you're also taking, you know, like I'm, you're doing because you want to do it. You have something to say. And I think sometimes maybe perhaps more for people who identify as women or people who have been, you know, marginalized, it's hard to say, what is it that I want in here, you know, to really have a stand for something. And I think that's one of the reasons we get blocked and one of the reasons we don't show up and we don't share our ideas. So for example, I had a client in one of my writing programs. She has published this book 
sell from love, think up and um, part of a whole, her whole business program, you know, business. And for her, the big epiphany was my, what, what was the author again? It's called, her uh, name is Finca. I cannot pronounce Jericho. her last name. Yeah. Is it, great. Is it, is it yeah. backwards? It's a great book. Um, she, for her, the big epiphany of the why was my creativity can serve my business. Now we all have different stories, but her, for her creativity was over here in this sort of silo of holiness <laughs> and creativity had to be just for very pure things. And when she was like, I can be creative and build my business together, which may, yeah, like you're so much about that, right? I am so much about that, but we all have, or we can have these stories we have to work through. So I think it really comes down to how do we learn to work with our brains and our lives? And it starts with what's in it for me? And then from there, we can stretch to connect to the people we want to reach so much more generously. And again, I'm looking at this from a, a, you know, I've worked a lot with women. So it seems to be something that happens a lot for women. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and one of the struggles I find, and I'd love for you to speak to this, is, um, you know, finding the time, right? Finding mm. the time, the energy to do the writing, uh, for, for women particularly, uh, but, but I would just generally for people who caretake. Yeah. Who, 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 who naturally uh, yeah, or... like, hey, let me help you with your uh -huh. issues. Let me, let, me, let me support you here uh -huh. before, you know, which is why, my, why are you talking about the, the selfish, selfish meaning why mm -hmm. you got to carve out the time. So how do you, <laughs> I'm sure you've seen this. I mean, self-care, right? You, you champion oh self-care. I gave so many talks about this for so many years. <laughs> right. Um, now, now you're championing writing. What, yeah, so, it is so, the same thing. <laughs> interesting. So, so how does, I mean, okay, fine. But it's like, why, why, what's keeping people from carving out the time and how do, how do they finally carve out that time when their family needs them or their community needs them or whatever, with their job, you know, or whatever is, is, is taking a lot of energy. I think there's a, a number of possibilities. Um, I think one is really comes back to, for me, a central idea, a central idea that I wrote about in my book, Why Bother, which is if we can't claim our own desires, and I don't mean in a, my desires are the only thing that matters, and I'm the only one who gets what I want, but just in knowing wow, I really want this. I want to play with words or I want, to, I want to write copy for clients or whatever your form of writing, right? There's so many different ways to write. I want this. This matters to me. And it, by doing it, it gives me something that brings me more alive. I, I really believe, George, that the reason that, that our first responsibility as humans is to be as fully ourselves and as fully alive as we can be. And when I look at so much of the, maybe not the big evil that happens in the world, but the small evils that happen in the world, I think so often it's because people don't have anything that matters to them and that brings them alive. So I think it's a profound act to say this half an hour alone with my writing or this two hours or whatever it looks like, and it can be small amounts of time, it matters to me, it fills me up. And, and it matters perhaps to a bigger goal or a desire I have that I wanna to work towards. And, and that matters too. Yeah. I also love, um, on, I have a podcast called Create Out Loud and I had Beth Pickens on and she works as an art, artist kind of consultant. Um, and she said this beautiful thing. She said, people who are creative have to create or they're, they're they don't, it, it, it's, it's not, um, it's essential. And when we don't do it, we, we fall apart. Like it's, it's what fills us up to go out and do those other things in the world, our community, our caregiving, et cetera. And we're the only people in the world who have to do something that's really essential to us, but we feel like we have to steal the time. And that really blew me away. You know, it's like, forget about stealing the time. This is your essential work. And if you're working towards it for a professional goal, that's great. But that essential thing counts. It matters. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. And sometimes people carve out that time or space mm -hmm. to do it. And mm -hmm. now 
<laughs> now <what? laughs> <laughs> now, lots of other things come up but yeah. but you know so whether we're talking about the resistance uh or we're talking about well i, I i'm not feeling inspired right now or creative I mean, carving out the time itself is, is, can be a monumental challenge. And then now that we've done that, it's like, oh, but I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling it right now. Um, how do you, mm -hmm. so for, for example, um, I, actually you have a writing program mm -hmm. where your, your, um, your clients or students kind of get together and write together uh, or write, write in that same time. Um, what, what, do you, what, what happens if that, someone shows up for that time and they don't feel inspired. Like, what do you, what do you say to that? Sure. So yeah, the program is called right now. Ha ha right now. Yes. W R I T E. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes. Not right now, but right, right now. There's yes. all kinds of yes. funds we can have there. Um, so one of the things that I teach people in right now, and there's a lot of uh, content, there's a lot of writing together and there's a lot mm. of repetition so that we can change your brain. So you can learn to write the way that you want a lot of community. Um, is that you have to prime the pump. The way that you learn to write in school doesn't work most of the time. The way that you see writers work on television and movies, ah, not the way it works. So if I'm just really, gonna, oh, <laughs> so like, well, you're just going to come in. Hi, hey, it's time to write. I'm yeah. Be inspired. No, that doesn't work. You have to prime the pump. And the way you prime the pump is separating out, thinking about what you want to write about, doing a cluster map for it, doing some reading, reading over some of the research, having a conversation if you're an extrovert with someone and taping it, right? And you don't do that. You have to have something in there before you can sit down to write. So for example, I'll give you a very simple example. I, you're, I try to publish a post slash newsletter every single week. I have four, 21 years, right? So sure, there's weeks I take off. Sure, there's times we repurpose content because you taught me how to repurpose content. <laughs> sure, there's times when they're, you know, we're doing a launch like right now. So we do a bunch of content and sales emails, things like that. But I have consistently written in addition to nine books, in addition to national magazine column, coursework, all of that, guest post, blah, 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 blah. And if I just sit down on a Monday morning, I mean, I wanna to go to bed right now, right? Like this is not gonna happen, but maybe I haven't thought about it on Sunday or Saturday. Maybe I was busy or maybe I didn't wanna work. So it's Monday morning I'm like, oh shoot, I gotta write. So what I do is I go, okay, I have been keeping a notebook with little ideas and things that feel interesting or juicy. So I look, I pick one, and then I go for a run. And I take that as a question. What do I want to say about this? And I stop repeatedly, <laughs> you know, make voice, me voice memos with my panting. And then I come home and I eat breakfast and I take a shower. So there's a break. And then I sit down to write. So there's, there's time to prime the pump. And we don't think that counts as writing, George, but it does. It's so, so important. I loved how you described, you know, a, an example of that mm -hmm. priming the pump exercise. And it's, it's awesome. It's what, it, because you're, you're adding in there, you know, movement, uh, oh, yeah. nature, time, yeah. you know, yeah. you're, you're adding in there kind of like you're dripping ideas as they come to you. You're like, you know, making that you're um, anyway, it's, it's great. It's really great. So in other words, different people prime the pump in different ways. Yes. Oh, totally. So yeah. for example, one of my students in right now, the last time she, you know, it takes a while to get these concepts and you have to make them your own. That's my whole point. Here's the concepts. They've been test driven with lots and lots of people, but you have to make them your own. So her prime, the pump was to go to a cafe and sit down and journal for 10 minutes and then write for 10 minutes. And it worked for a while. And then she started to find, if I remember right, she found that what she would do was spend the whole, like she had 20 minutes before work. She would spend the whole time journaling that she didn't, she didn't have a, a transition to do the actual writing. So what she did was start journaling on the bus and then get to the coffee shop, have a natural break, order her coffee, sit down. And then the, the signal to her body when she sat down with the coffee or whatever she got was to start writing. So you have to play with it to make it your own, right? Um, some people do it before bed. Um, some I had a client um, in a writing program, in the same ideas, but a little bit more intensive feedback from me. She was writing a book about Chinese economic zones. 
And so for her, it was, it was looking over research, right? She has this huge body of PhD research. Um, so yeah, it just depends. Yeah. 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 And let's say they, somebody has uh, gotten the time and they've gotten uh, the priming, the pump, uh, <laughs> they're writing, uh, but then there's still doubts about, well, is this good enough? Yeah. No, put it's out not. there. No, it's not good enough. It's the first <laughs> draft. It is such a silly question that we have. Yeah. We are so focused on outcome in this culture. And yes, I like I said, I publish all the time. I write content to build my business. I need outcome. But I promise you, and this has been so hard won for me, and it has cost me so much. The more you focus on outcome, the more you will lose your energy, your creativity, and your originality. And it's happening on your brain because you're looking at the Everything about that goal is taking you away from where you need to focus in the moment. So everything about writing itself needs to be in the process. And then when you're done for the day, you can step back and go, okay, you know, I have to publish this tomorrow. So tomorrow morning, I'm going to schedule an hour to rewrite, or I'm going to send this right. You know, you, you build in other processes if you have to keep producing. But that out over outcome focus is basically intrinsic motivation, which doesn't work until you're really close to the goal. And then sometimes it can work. So we have to keep finding that desire, that intrinsic motivation, and we have to let it be crappy, George. My first drafts and my I'm, second I'm used drafts, to that. <laughs> they suck. I cut 75 pages from just the beginning of that book. Wow. Yeah, now that, that's really... Uh... So when, when, you know, when, when I hear writers say that, I'm like, oh my God, doesn't it feel like a waste of time and energy? Like what's your, how, how do you relate to that mm. culling of all that stuff? Well, I, I would say, and in, in, uh, <laughs> this sounds like a pitch to work in my program, yeah, but it's... it really does. It's really worthwhile to have somebody if you're working on a big project, yeah. it's fine yeah, if sure. you're throwing away three paragraphs of a blog post. But um, having a coach or having somebody who's working alongside of you to help you will save you on some of that. And some of it is just part of the process. You are not cutting a dress to a pattern where you can make sure you have this much waste. It's just not the way writing works. So pre-planning and working through vision sheets that I use can really help. I did that. I did that work and I still produce stuff. Some of it I used for marketing. Some of it clarified my ideas. I mean, some of it you just gotta like make peace with, you know? Yeah, wow. And um, given your experience, I mean, in, in publishing, publishing, publishing so much, but books, but blog posts, content online, et cetera. I mean, to you, it's so normal to, mm. to publish now. I think I'm just thinking about the members that you work with, like in right mm. now, for example. Are they usually publishing their writing or are they kind of writing it for, for their, well, I guess if you're writing it for your job, that's publishing to a smaller group mm -hmm. or team or, or are they writing for themselves? Like what's the, um, how, what's the relationship of publishing to most of the people that you're working with? It really varies. So right now is a program that has people of all genres and all levels. So there might, there's, there's someone who's returning for the second time. She's a climate scientist. She's a climate professor. And she's working on something that she does very much want to publish, but she is still determining what this project and this book is going to be about. Um, then there's someone else who's like, I just want to, like, I've always wanted to write. I haven't written in a long time. I really want to get back into it. I don't know what I want to do with it. I don't even know what genre I want to write in, right? So they might, like, publish one thing on Medium. Um, there's other people who are writing uh, legacy for their family. They're like, I really want to make sure that my kids and my grandkids and my sisters don't lose these stories. But we can still work so much to make that so much more readable and wonderful for those people. So it really depends. That's that right now is a program that that works for everybody for people with with big goals and also people who are like, I would just love it if I could show up and get words on the page and learn how to love them. Yeah, and for some of you who are watching this right now, uh, right now, um, <laughs> you know, the program is, uh, is coming up in, well, as of our recording, it's coming up in a, in a couple of weeks from now. And uh, you're, I know you're planning to 
uh, hopefully um, redo it again uh, a few months after that. Mm -hmm. um, so of course I will have the links below, but what, um, so you kind of described a bit about um, the types of people who might come into the program, what they might do it for. Uh, what, tell us like what's special about this kind of program. Um, mm -hmm. So, well, I'm just thinking like, what's, what are people's alternatives actually? I mean, <laughs> a lot of people who are listening and watching, like my alternative is to not write, yeah. well, <laughs> you know, or, or, or I guess the alternative is to get a writing coach, right? Yeah, absolutely. Some people go through this program and they get a writing coach. Um, you know, I created this program, George, because I mean, I've been teaching writing for 20 years. So I started off just doing a, a writing retreat a year. And then, you know, over time, just, you know, I've always studied writing. As, as I said, I started writing four years ago. And over the, these 20 years, there's all these things I've learned that I really see either nobody else talking about some of them or not talking about in this way or not putting them together in this way. So I really am getting to the point in my life where I'm like, if I died, would I have, have I, have I said what I want to say on this subject? So right now I did my damnedest to create a con content. It's, it's um, audio and transcript, same, you know, uh, same lesson um, that really encapsulates as beautifully with as much humor and as much crispness as I could. What are the things I really think matter to know about writing? And then I created a program of support around it because I really believe that people are lonely and that we need each other and we need our mirror neurons uh, firing and I love coaching people <laughs> and I love teaching. So I always got to have a live element. So there's live retreats in it where you generate a lot of material together. There's live coaching. Um, and then you have me on call during the week on the forum. To, um, I'm very active answering questions. So there's a lot of support. There's small groups so people can get to know a small group of like-minded people. I take a lot of care of how I put people together. So it's a very multi-layered program because that's how I like to teach. That's awesome. And just to clarify, live retreats at this time. On, on, on virtual. Zoom. Okay, on Zoom. <laughs> yeah. Right. Because so. of the damn COVID. This is a physical, <laughs> physical distance live retreat. Yes, physically distant yeah. retreats. Um, it would be very so, fun, would they? <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, I, I just, somebody on one of my Facebook friends just said, oh, I'm working on a book project. Could, could use some feedback. Who do you recommend? I said, oh, I don't know if Jen does the one on one book coaching at this time. Uh, but she'd be great. Uh, would someone like that be great for the program, for this program? Like, in, in other words, how much feedback can one expect in, in this kind of mm. program? Yeah. And right now I don't, I don't read people's pages. I also right. do a mastermind, uh, which has already started for the year. Yeah. We'll, yeah. we'll only get in the fall. That you actually get me to read your pages. Cool. Cool. Um, cause it costs more. <laughs> yeah, um, sure. I do a little bit of individual coaching for just like big projects or projects that already have contracts, that kind of thing. Um, so if somebody has a book in mind right now can, can work for them, I would need, they would need to, I would just need to email back and forth with them about where, sure. where they are in the project, yeah. and how much they know about it. And sometimes people feel like they're, they think they're farther along than they are. And they well, go yeah. through some basics can really help them accelerate. Do they get um, people in the right now program? Do they get uh, feedback from one another, or is that is that a possibility? Or um, it's a possibility after the program. After, we, okay, cool. Yeah, we don't like people to give feedback over the three months because sometimes people give it unskillfully, ah. and then they hurt each other's feelings. So yeah. in the mastermind, I teach everybody how to give feedback, Very or nice. after right now, um, then yeah. people stay friends and stay. Sure. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's that's great. I mean, I in the three month program, it's a three month program, is that right? Yes. Yeah, it's plenty plenty to do. Um, just right, to kind it's of a lot. It get into the, the the structure and the practice of writing doing it consistently the creativity the overcoming the blocks etc anything else you want to say about the right now program for someone who's thinking about it oh um you i'll know, put, of course put the link below so people thank can check you, out everything thank you. Yeah. yeah i think the most important thing i go back to that moment when i i functionally did quit writing i said to a friend who i was very jealous of um, she had gotten a screenwriting deal and I had not gotten the screenwriting deal. And I said to her, you know, I'm going to quit writing for a while. 
I want to help you in that moment. I want to help you in that moment uh, to know that writing doesn't have to hurt. I want to make writing easier for you. I want, I want you to find more joy and more pleasure. And I want you to write more for right now. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. So any um, kind of parting words of yeah. wisdom for, for the aspiring writer uh, from... We're share. all aspiring, right? <laughs> yes. right? I mean, it doesn't matter what you've done. Every project, every blog post, every article, every book is new. I think the most important thing we can learn is good, good tools that work for us that we adjust to ourselves and self-trust. Mm. To really trust that you do have something to say and to really trust that those feelings and those callings and those images and those ideas matter. But here's the biggest thing I can tell people is if you don't allow yourself time to pay attention to those without multitasking, without distracting yourself, they can't become real to you. They can't build and they can't take on a life. So at the very least listening to this, and you're like, I don't want right now, or I can't afford right now or whatever, please give yourself that time to really listen and trust you have something to say, because I know you do. That is never the issue. Mm, it's beautiful. And for those who are interested in checking out the Right Now program, W-R-I-T-E Now with Jen Loudon, please go ahead and um, check out the link below. Um, yeah, Jen, just thank you for your work and the passion that you <laughs> bring forth for, well, the passion you bring forth in your members and your <laughs> students, clients, uh, put it on paper so thanks well, thank being. you george for being you you're a wonderful uh mentor to me and i love reading your stuff and i learned so much from you so thank you oh my gosh thank you so much <laughs> for saying that. thanks jen hi george <laughs>